Okay. We're going to talk about avoiding combinations and why you should do that. Unless it is absolutely unavoidable and super easy. Alright, let's take a look at this table. Here's the cue ball, here's the one ball, the one to the two, the two to the three, three to the four, four to the five, five to the six, six to the seven, seven to the eight, and the eight to the nine. And right away we see this potential combination with the four to the seven into the seven. And we also have a potential combination with the 5 into the 7, if we shoot the 4 in another pocket. Um, I'm choosing to shoot the 4 and the 5, both in this corner pocket here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky, and there's a lot of reasons I avoid these combinations, and I'm going to show you the main one when we get to it. So let's go. We got to pull back on this one ball to get to. Let me turn the volume down here. Uh, you don't want to necessarily be uh, straight in on the two because we want to get back to this side of the eight to shoot this three, uh, two rails back to the to it for a shot on this four in the corner, but it doesn't quite work out like that. And right from the start, I shoot the one, and I draw back a little bit too far. Um, I can blame it on the cloth, but I'm not going to. I should know this by now. See that little bit of left-hand English really pulls it back. Um, which in this case, I didn't even expect it to come back to any, you know, to un I wanted it to come under the side pocket, and that's how, that's how off I am here in misjudging this cloth. Uh, but we'll get the hang of it. This would be pretty decent position if the two was gone and I had just pulled back on this three ball because that would set me perfectly on this four without worrying about uh, this six ball getting hit or tying things up. So here I am, and I just took a look at if I leave this cue ball over on this side, will I have room? to make this three and from there can I get back on this four so I've already made it hard on myself from the start and let's see what happens now you know I have a shot on the three but it's going to be difficult to get back we don't want to be exactly on this side of the four because the nine's in the way of course but we do want a little bit of a cut shot to draw back into the side rail and come out and kill the kill the cue ball off the side rail for a shot on the five. So I come up way short on that, and I just died off that bottom rail. And here we are. Yeah, this is a tester shot on this four, and I'm sticking with the plan of shooting this four in that other far corner there. Um, you might think that's a bit nuts. Um, why didn't I just play for the combination? And the reason is, in, in any regular pool game, you're controlling the cue ball and the object ball, and you want the cue ball to get into the right position for the following two balls, right? So you have all of that to think about. But in a combination, now you have, now you're controlling another object ball and you have to stay in control of the first ball you hit into that object ball and you have to think ahead a little bit if we got right behind this four and shot this four seven in the corner there's a good chance if we hit this two full that that four ball is going to you know follow that seven right into the corner and now we're going to be somewhere around where the four ball is now for a shot on the five and we just screwed her so or it's it's not real hard for this first ball this four ball to get away from you and to misjudge it just by a hair 
Um, in other words, it just gets too complicated and there becomes too much to think about and all that crap running around your head really destroys the fun of playing pool, especially when it doesn't work out. So a smart player will shoot this four into the seven and get on a shot for the five ball, just in case that four ball does go down. So, okay, if we do that and the four ball doesn't go down, now we don't have a shot on the four ball. There's just too much that can go wrong. So I'm sticking with the plan, killing this off the bottom rail and the side rail, and, and drawing out to that side rail on that four to kill it right there and to get a perfect angle on the six ball. That's the best way to play it. And you might ask yourself, well, what if it was a nine ball instead of a seven ball? And if we can get easily get on that four ball for a shot on the four nine combination, if it's natural, if it's easy, then, and also the big one, if you're in a competitive match, um, such as a tournament or a gambling match or a league match or whatever, um, yeah, if it's easy, if it's simple, and if that nine ball is right there in front of the pocket, yeah. Go ahead and do it, but don't go out. I've seen guys, and you know, they'll have the the four nine set up right in front of the pocket, and and they'll and in order to get position on that four ball, they'll shoot a crazy shot on the one, and cut the cue ball loose, and now they're even more crazy on the two. But they're still trying to get right in back of that four, and they screw it all up, and they wind up giving the game to their opponent. Um, just to get on the fork nine combination when the run out was ten times easier. So, yeah, I, I think you get my point. So, here we go. We're just rolling back up table, or down table, on this six ball. And I wanted the angle here. You can see my game's a little bit off, and that cue ball just rolled off by about five inches. Uh, if you didn't see that, let's go back. Watch the roll of this cue ball. Something went wrong when they were putting the seams of this slate together. There's a seam a little bit up further from that dot, and you'll see this roll up. You see it? Yeah. So I want to be a little bit closer to the rail so I can just come up and then back all the way and back uh, this nine ball. Yeah, let's go three rails and poof, would have been perfect and get up on the seven, but it didn't work out that way, so I'm drawing all the way back down the table again below the nine ball. <clears throat> and that's where we get, which is not very good. It's like almost straight in. So how the hell are we going to get back on the, on the eight ball? And uh, I want you to think about this, and you tell me where you would shoot this uh or how you would shoot the seven to get back on this eight so let's go back a little bit so we can see this table if we draw a line straight from the back of the pocket through the eight ball to the rail um that's where you want the cue ball to hit coming off this seven for a natural angle back up on the eight and let's just try to get straight in on the eight it might fail and this is being shot with bottom left all right, you figure out how to do it. And we're going to run the whole game from start to finish without me yakking and a little bit of background music so you can enjoy it without interruptions. Start to finish, one through the nine. 